Think back to high school, back in math class where you learned this little concept called imaginary numbers. You might have thought that nobody would ever need this in real life, but imaginary numbers are especially important, being used in physics, science, electrical engineering, computer hardware, and so much more. This concept has probably affected your life in more ways than one. Throughout history, mathematicians have tried and failed to solve the cubic equation, but sometime in 1510, a mathematician named Scipione del Ferro would change that notion when he would discover a solution to the depressed cubic equation, which is a normal cubic without the x squared term. Del Ferro would keep his new solution secret so that he could use it in his next math duel, which involved a mathematician challenging one another with a series of questions. The person who completed all the questions first would win, and the other person would lose their reputation and often their career would be ruined. Hence, Del Ferro would only reveal his solution to his student, Antonio Maria Fior, when he was on his deathbed. Fior began boasting of his solution, confident that he could win any duel. So when a respected mathematician Niccolo Tartaglia moved into his city, Fior would challenge him. However, Tartaglia was prepared. Tartaglia had always doubted Fior finding the solution, writing, I did not deem him capable of finding such a rule on his own. However, Tartaglia figured that if Fior had a solution, it was probably someone else's, which is when he learned of Del Ferro. Knowing that a solution was possible, Tartaglia succeeded in finding it using clever substitution and thinking. In the end, during the duel, Tartaglia solved all of Fior's questions, and Fior had solved none. When others learned of Tartaglia finding the solution for the depressed cubic, many tried coaxing it out of him, much to no avail, until one man would end up being able to persuade Tartaglia. Soon after the duel, a man named Gerolamo Cardano began imploring Tartaglia for the equation. After a few years, in 1539, Tartaglia finally caved and gave it to him in the form of a poem in return for a generous sum of money. However, he required Cardano to swear to secrecy and promised to never reveal this equation, to which Cardano agreed. Cardano began tinkering with it, and eventually, he succeeds in discovering the coveted solution for the actual cubic, which he obtained by depressing the cubic through substituting the unknown with another value then simplifying and finally applying Tartaglia's formula. Publishing this solution could have lasting effects for many fields, including engineering. However, having been sworn to secrecy, he was unable to share his new discovery. Cardano had no need to hide the formula, for his income came from his many other lines of work. One day, however, Cardano visits Bologna, where he meets the son-in-law of Del Ferro, Annabelle Della Neve. After some consultation, Cardano is granted access to Del Ferro's old notebooks, where he discovers the same solution for the depressed cubic that Tartaglia had formed. Claiming he was publishing Del Ferro's solution, he published it in his book, Ars Magna. Although Tartaglia is acknowledged in the book, he remained unpleased. During the writing of his book, Cardano would encounter many equations involving negative square roots. He would try to ask Tartaglia about it, however, still being upset about the betrayal, Tartaglia mocked Cardano for not understanding it, despite being unable to solve it himself. Cardano states that square root 9 is either plus 3 or minus 3, for a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus yields a plus. Therefore, square root 9 is neither plus 3 nor minus 3, but is some recondite third sort of thing. The recondite third Cardano mentions in this quote is what we know today as the imaginary unit. Over time, many mathematicians have inquired about this value, and over time, more and more properties were found about this unique unit. Cardano's student, Raphael Bombelli, would end up confirming how imaginary numbers were a completely different type of number, and he would make many developments regarding it, including the form in which complex numbers are written in now. Complex numbers are numbers written in the form a plus b times square root of minus 1 and they are essentially a combination of imaginary and real numbers. A represents the real part, and B times square root of minus 1 represents the imaginary part. Later, after the way in which algebra is notated was developed, René Descartes would begin to utilize these numbers more frequently, popularizing them and bringing them mainstream. But imaginary numbers began to take shape primarily when the famous mathematician Leonard Euler began delving into the strange properties of this unique value. 
In fact, it was he who introduced the term i for representing the square root of minus 1, i being short for imaginary. But perhaps his most famous and most important work involving imaginary numbers is when he introduced Euler's formula in his book, Introduction to the Analysis of the Infinite. This formula is incredibly important as it shows the relationship between many things, trig functions, Euler's number, and imaginary numbers. Another discovery that came about this time was a geometric representation of imaginary numbers, formed by a cartographer named Caspar Wessel, who published it in On the Analytical Representation of Direction. This concept revolves around taking the common number line and constructing an additional axis, known as the imaginary axis. Similar to the Cartesian coordinate plane, this kind of representation forms a complex coordinate plane, which allows complex numbers, and therefore imaginary numbers, to be plotted in a more geometric way. This representation would reinforce the idea that imaginary numbers were a part of mathematics, because like how negative numbers are an extension of a number line with only whole numbers, imaginary numbers are an extension of the real number line. Over centuries of work, the imaginary unit would end up being solidified as an important part in mathematics. After all that, you might be wondering, why is this important to us? Well, imaginary numbers do go beyond being merely a concept. When the famous Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger published his equation in 1926, it was regarded as the most important equation in the field of quantum mechanics. Schrodinger's equation describes a wave function based on some given properties, able to predict how particles react to external influences. However, nobody expected to find the imaginary unit right in the crux of the equation. Regarding that revelation, the physicist Freeman Dyson said, That square root of minus 1 means that nature works with complex numbers and not with real numbers. Many physicists were unable to fathom such a concept being used in physics. However, it didn't stop there. Schrodinger's equation would revolutionize the way people worked with imaginary numbers, and the new possibilities would help pave the way for innovative technologies. An example of quantum mechanics being used for technology is the transistor. This is one of the building blocks of modern technology, and developments such as these would result in a whole new technological revolution. Quantum mechanics has also helped make the electron microscope, which was groundbreaking as it allowed scientists to see microscopic organisms. According to an article published to the National Library of Medicine, specifically, both the rapid developments of mRNA-based vaccines and effective antibody therapies have drawn from knowledge gained by a single particle cryo-EM. A single particle cryo-EM is a form of electron microscopy, and using its data, millions of lives were saved as a vaccine for COVID-19 was able to be developed quickly. Imaginary numbers are also used in electrical engineering. However, rather than using I to represent the imaginary unit, J is used since I already represents current. One of the main reasons they're used in electrical engineering is because complex equations are used to model various electrical signals while also allowing engineers to modify devices within a circuit. A more specific case of this is seen when analyzing alternating currents. Alternating currents are a type of voltage that oscillates thousands of times during its travel. Euler's formula is crucial when dealing with alternating currents, as its real part can be used to represent the wave. Alternating current is essential due to it being inexpensive while preserving energy over long distances, and therefore being used commonly in homes and offices around the globe. Hence, it's best if it can be calculated more efficiently, as it's used practically everywhere. Without the use of complex equations in its analysis, calculating the current would be much harder, making the jobs of electrical engineers a lot less efficient and more tedious. Throughout modern technology, imaginary numbers are found in many places. The revelation of the imaginary unit in Schrodinger's equation would forever change modern technology, and what was originally a perplexing and difficult concept is now used for convenience in electrical engineering. In a world without imaginary numbers, many technological advancements would have been held back, and humanity wouldn't be the same.